Hello and welcome back to Chart Wrap by True Options Masters. My name is Mike Merson, your managing editor, and we're here as always to look over the coolest, hottest, scariest charts that I covered for you in our chart of the day sections this week. If you like this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, put on that notification bell, and if you're not already, be sure you are still listening. Listening? Reading. True Options Masters, the greatest options trading newsletter this side of planet Earth and all sides of planet Earth. I don't want to, I don't want to dilute that. We are, we're the best one on the planet. Maybe the universe, probably the universe. I can't say I know all of them. Anywho, let's, let's get away from that weird tangent and get into the charts. Let me turn down my monitors so that we get no more email things to bother us. It's been a rough few weeks, hasn't it, folks? We're here looking at the NASDAQ futures. We are down over 15% now. You can see that these are the markups I left behind from when I covered this chart for you on Monday. 15.5%. We were as low as 17%, which makes us 3% from the lows of the way to a bear market. That is not fun, but the charts don't lie. We've broken significant moving averages. We're shifting into a bearish mode here. And this all comes as the Fed hikes, or the Fed hasn't hiked yet, but the Fed wants to hike um, probably four times this year. Um, I personally don't think they're going to hike that many times this year. Uh, purely for the fact of what it's going to do to the stock market, and as much as they like to avoid talking about the stock market, the Fed watches the stock market because of what we saw right here. <laughs> market sold off, Fed cut to zero, flooded the market with money, printed dubiously, not totally sure of these figures, something like 40% of all U.S. currency um, currently in circulation, and we had the rally of all rallies. But now, markets are going risk-off. That's going across from everything to Bitcoin, the tech stocks, um, to non-tech stocks. It's just, everyone's trying to get out. Um, it's a rough time. But we're true options masters. We don't need to worry about the stock market going up or down. Because we can make money on both sides. Chad Shoup, for Fastlane Profit subscribers, it looks like he did that just this morning. So kudos to you if you were uh, smart enough to... Sign up for Fastlane Profits. Might put a link to that down below in the description. I don't know why I said that. But in any case, the plain fact is the chart looks ugly. We do have some support we're hitting here. We're not really hitting it right now, but we did at some point. And we are coming a bit off the, the daily lows. We switch over to our daily chart here. We're coming a bit, like, see, we're, we're, we're hitting this support. It wanted to go lower, but we're trying to find a bottom here. Maybe we will, but we do have the moving averages starting to cross below the uh, long-term moving average. Uh, this is the 200 MA, uh, and then for reference, I use the 9 and 20 EMAs and the 50 MA. Uh, that would be the blue line, or excuse me, the pink, blue, and orange lines, respectively. They are moving into a bearish configuration. Um, and you just want to be cautious here. I don't know that we're going to bottom right here just yet. We do have some support to think about right down at this level. And um, that's just the picture with stocks right now. You want to be selling rips, buying put options, trading to the downside generally. If you're an intraday trader, there's a lot of chop to play around with, but you got to be careful. Make sure you're not over leveraging. Make sure you're not putting too much money in any one position because this is an ugly sell-off. Uh, I mentioned on Monday, we've had fewer relief bounces in this sell-off than even during the pandemic crash. Uh, and it's taken place in less time. We haven't fallen quite as much, but there's been almost no relief bounces, uh, save for what we saw this week. And it's just ugly. But what goes down must come up, uh, in the stock market anyway. So I think we're probably gonna see a relief rally here. I just don't know if that's one to buy or one to sell. Time will tell. Let's move right along to another indicator I've been watching. 
And let me just get it set up for you. Pardon my dog licking himself back there. It's just a part of, just a part of, I was going to say human nature, but I suppose it's really dog nature. Let's take a look at the Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Band width and the volatility index. This is the CBOE volatility index, also known as the market fear gauge. Now, volatility is on the rise, no kidding. Uh, we're also seeing the Bollinger Band width on the rise, and we're also seeing the volatility index close outside of its Bollinger Band and then back inside of its Bollinger Band. Now this, as I've been taught from Jeff Clark, a great trader, uh, someone you should probably follow, and uh, I'm almost a mentor of mine. Jeff, if you're watching, thank you. This tends to produce really clean buy signals. So we see the volatility index rising out of the Bollinger Bands, pretty close, because vol volatility expanded very rapidly, closed outside, now it's closing back inside and slightly on the rise again. So anyway, when the, when the volatility index closes outside of the Bollinger Bands, then closes back in, that produces a broad stock market buy signal. You can see this play out many, many times in the past. So let's just go all the way back to June of 2020. VIX popped out of the Bollinger Bands, closed back below, volatility came in. And if I could just overlay a chart of the S&P, uh, S&P, not S7P, all right. So you can see the pop in volatility coincided with this little downturn in the S&P. Looks like a joke now, doesn't it? But then when the VIX closed back inside, the rally resumed. We got a little more volatility, but the rally resumed on a more macro level. Here again, volatility popped outside, closed back inside. That was your signal to buy back in. It's kind of a longer term indicator. We are looking at the daily chart here in which patterns play out over weeks and months. Uh, but you see it play out time and time again. Volatility popped above, closed back inside, came all the way in. Market rally resumed, popped above. I'm not going to go through every one. Uh, but frankly, this one is a little bit different. Just because we didn't get such a clean break outside of the Bollinger Band, we kind of traded along with it, and then we came back inside. We're also making a slightly higher high on the volatility index, uh, the volatility index along with higher lows. So, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm never going to claim to. I think volatility will persist this year, but I think this is signaling to us that we may see a bit of a relief bounce in the coming days and weeks. So if you're brave enough to try to play that with call options, I tried to this week, had to cut my position, uh, lost some money, it was a little early. Uh, I respect that. But just be careful. As I always preach, just be cautious. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on sale right now. Um, tech stocks, if you don't think they're going to fall much further, they're definitely cheaper now than they were before. And that kind of brings us into our next chart, which is ARC. We'll just get rid of this comparison and get us back to our candles. And bring us up to the weekly. And go back to my template. All right. Arc. The arc is sinking. <laughs> the arc is sinking beneath the waves of volatility. Look how oversold this dang thing is, man. And the thing is, it's not really not really much to see. I mean, it, we're below the 200-day moving average, or excuse me, the 200-week moving average on arc, uh, which was only born a, a few years ago. So it's not like the cleanest data set to look at for this particular asset, but you can see we bounced off it really nicely right at the pandemic bottom. This though, investors have had enough with Kathy Wood. Uh, the moving averages look really, really rough. We're we're, our shorter term moving averages are, uh, are crossing below the longer term ones and they're headed straight for the 200 MA. ARC is, talk about brave, I mean, if you're going to bet on a bounce on ARC, you better be nimble. Uh, I don't really have much more to say on ARC other than rip in peace, Kathy Wood. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's going to be rough to attract uh, capital in the weeks and months ahead. But when this thing bottoms and the appetite for risk comes back, I do think that ARC is going to be... Well, one, I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think ARC Invest is going out of business because of the sell-off. And I'm not, like, super familiar with their fundamentals so if you think i'm wrong 
definitely uh, leave a comment and tell me why. But I think Ark will persist in the years to come. And if you want to try and catch this knife, it could potentially reward you years down the line. Uh, so that, that's all I have to say about Ark. Good luck, Ark investors. You seriously need it. And the last thing we'll look at today is a bit more of a technical indicator than we're used to. It's the put call ratio. So put call ratio is very, very simple. It shows you uh, whether or not uh, people are buying more puts in the market or more calls. So I'm going to go ahead and put a yellow line around the one mark. When we're above one, they're buying more puts. When we're below one, they're buying more calls. We, and you can see that the, the candles are inversed. So the green candles go down on this chart, the red candles go up. The red signify more put buying, the green signify, signify more call buying. So you can see that we're seeing the most put buying since March, end of March 2020. Uh, and it, it really started in late February of 2020. But it is kind of a different candle so far in that the weekly is persisting and it's not selling off back into the green. We've seen a lot of wicks come in where there's a lot of put buying, but then call buying kind of took it over. Uh, in the past, this is a persistent candle body that is going to close in about four hours. So we'll see if this reverses by the close and we get some kind of crazy screw you rally to end the session. Um, I expect weakness to end the session. I could be wrong. Um, and I do think this could potentially worsen, but I will call your attention to these wicks back here. The put buying at one point got over three times the amount of call buying. And when was that? That was in mid-March, which was like right before the bottom. So when you see these massive, massive extremes in the put call ratio, that's probably a good time to bet against the herd and get really long call options. Cause you see what happened if you did, like if you bought a long dated call on like say the S&P or the QQQs back here, you would have multiplied your money many, 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 many times over. Uh, it's not a very uh, comfortable thing to do, but if you're going to be a trader, if you're going to swing and you're going to try to catch bottoms and be contrarian, this is the indicator to look at. That's going to wrap it up for Chart Wrap this week. Uh, thank you for coming along with me on this ride, this journey, as we do every single week. We switch back to my intermission cam here. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, continue reading True Options and Masters. Be sure to like, subscribe, all the stuff you always hear YouTubers talking about. You know I don't like going through all that stuff, but I do it because Tom is the greatest options trading newsletter in the world, the universe, the galaxy, in our realm of existence. And it deserves your support because we work hard to make sure you make great trading decisions and are supported by the experts, Mike, Chad, Amber, Chris. Um, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I'm on my way and you're on your way. All right. Take care, everyone, and have a great weekend.